Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome back to our channel. So, as promised in our last video, this video is going to be mostly about catching you guys up on mm -hmm. things we've done. But we also have a little bit of story time uh, that we got some serious sticker shock. <laughs> so to get us started, I want to let you start the show and get us caught up on all the horrible work no okay your work's not horrible but the job was horrible all the work you've done on insulating the room it actually wasn't that bad oh well in that case we'll do some more <laughs> so insulation is kind of a boring thing so i decided to kind of do it in chunks i did the wall behind you over there in one chunk this one a different chunk and then this really fun wall right here it kind of took a little bit of time Thankfully, most of the pieces up top and below the window are all the same height. So I was able to kind of cut them all at once and then stuff them all at once. There are some weird spots on this wall. You can see where the yellow insulation is right there. It's just a corner, so there's only a little bit of space. That's actually the old insulation. We'll leave it there because it's kind of hard to stuff the insulation in there and you get it all over your hands and everything else. We do have a little bit more to add to fill in some of the cracks, mainly above in the little triangle area up top. There's just some smaller pieces that we're going to try and stuff just to keep the cold air from eking in. Eek. Guess that's it. Back when we were doing our kitchen and dining room renovation over a year ago, someone out there, one of our viewers, sent us a bunch of boxes of screws. Just want to say thank you again. We are still using these things. They've gone great, worked wonderful. And again, thank you. Ah, I didn't like that one anyway. A little buddy on my shoulder like a pirate's parrot <laughs> so here is a better look at what I mean by a corner for attaching the drywall this where is it right here you want to make sure you have solid wood supporting every corners that way you can attach them and they're properly supported so that was the 
second bird this board squished and over here adding it for the box is the first bird still gotta put it up so we can squish it though So what you saw me just do is take a scrap piece of wood, it's about nine and a half inches tall, run it across all these studs, give us a rough mark, and that's where we're going to go through and drill all the holes through the studs to run the wiring. That's about the same height as comes with the home, or was originally put in the home, so that it keeps a uniform standardized height. So we kind of think all the wires are at this level, keeps everything nice and straight as well. So the other thing we've been doing is electrical work and that's not really exciting. Probably the most exciting thing we've done is actually add a new light switch right here. We are going to put some recessed LED lights in the little alcove or pop out above the windows here. We think it would be kind of a cool little feature to add and being that they're LED, they're very low draw on the breakers or circuitry. We're not worried about tripping the breakers or overloading it and we figure why not? It'll give it a nice little purposeful, meaningful area of the bedroom and kind of give it, I don't know, purpose. The other thing we did is also add the wiring in this box for a light outside the house if we decide to do so in the future. Right now the wire will not be hooked up. It is completely dead from start to finish. But we figured now was the time to run that wire while everything was opened up. So we have it in the future if we want to do something out there as well. As far as electrical, we'll also go over here. Another area that we did electrical work was right here with our new wall, of course. This is the light switch for the boys' bedroom. I added an extra stud here to space it off of the door enough so that when I add my trim, the light switch is not too close to the door. Another thing that we've always thought is weird, I don't know if other mobile homes are like this or not, but it seemed like with ours, the door was here, but the light switch was like way over. It's like that in all the original ones. I don't know why they did that. So it's nice to have this one closer and more appropriate. In here in the bathroom, we did more electrical work. Kind of walking backwards. Originally the bathroom door swung this way. We obviously put our pocket doors in here. And so the light switch that was originally on this wall, we could not put it there because, well, we have a door inside the wall now. What we decided to do is put the light switch here, which meant running the wiring up and over and kind of doing kind of a loop. The power comes from this way, comes over to the box, and then goes back over to the light. So it was a little bit wasteful for wiring, but overall it gives a good layout and flow as far as flipping the lights on here, 
but still having the lights above the sink and everything. One of the fun things about framing everything up, especially with lumber prices being what they are, is the fact you have to put a lot of things in place only for the purpose of installing your drywall. This is a good example. If you want to get a little bit closer, you can kind of see it. Here we have, this is the doorway. So this was needed. And here are the two studs for this doorway. In addition to these three boards, I also had to add another one here because you want the corner to be totally wood for your drywall. And then inside over here, I had to add another board. I decided to use a one by four. This is actually a bed slat from our bed. Well, we don't, okay, it's from the bed we took apart. <laughs> I am not stealing our bed parts yet. And the one by four will be perfectly fine to act as the securement point or nailer for our drywall. As it comes across here, you gotta have something to support it in every joint and everywhere you can. Otherwise, it'll get blown through, especially with kids or just, you know, general usage and stuff. So that gets you guys all caught up on the random little things that we've done in the bedroom. Things that in and of themselves are not, um, you know, momentous, wonderful videos. But we did want to cover the many things that are behind the scenes that you do in a project like this. Little things add up to a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Nickel and dime. <laughs> yeah. Little things definitely add up to a lot, especially when you consider, you know, that was a trip to the store. That oh was a gosh. trip to the store. <laughs> we forgot this and no, we can't go forward until we have that. So, yay. Yes. So I heard you got a little proposal in your email today. I did because you called the people and told them where is our proposal in it's the email. It's been over a week. So, need to fill people in on what in the world we're talking about. Yes. First, let me back up and explain ourselves a little bit. We removed our electric furnace in one of our previous videos. And in that video, the clips or the storyline of that furnace removal was like a cliff note. We had some problems with the camera. We had some files and clips corrupt and a lot of that story was lost. So I want to catch you guys up with why did we remove our electric furnace? Well, for one, the electric furnace costs a lot. And I mean a lot to run. Because and it's so, an old inefficient one. Yes. From the 80s. It was original. So a couple of years back we had gotten a wall propane heater and we had been using it. Well we have. We still Yeah do. exclusively. That's what we use and we are able to use fans and it heats our whole house. And me being how I am when we went down the road of getting this propane heater I actually did like a whole cost analysis to see mm -hmm. are we saving money and with our power company how it is and prices and all that we would use about $15 per day for electric heat plus the home and when we don't use that we used about six to seven per day so it was significant yeah yeah so we ran that way I mean we still do we still have the propane heat and that's what we use for our primary heat source so we've not been using our electric furnace I don't think it's turned on the past two years. No. Only in like emergencies did we use it, but we just circumnavigated that issue with power outages or, well, propane outages by getting a second tank. Okay, so I think that covers the story of our electric heat. Yes. And how we are not insane. We didn't remove our heat source from our home. We just took out something that we would not been using anyway and knew mm -hmm. we would never use again. And so now we have used that spot, open it up, and it's going to be a big hallway. Yes. But we were curious about central heat and air because the propane does add a lot of moisture into the air, which can cause problems if you don't do something about it. Or run a dehumidifier like we do most all the time. So I decided that I wanted to call and get an estimate from an HVAC company to see how much it would be to add in a unit in our house, whether it would be like an all-in-one unit that would sit outside or mini splits that we would do three of mm -hmm. and to do different zones. Yeah, bedroom, bedroom, and then main living area. So a week ago, a guy came out, looked at everything, did his calculations, and... 
today Sam got the proposal. So what we had him give us a quote on was both the conventional unit where the unit is somewhere else and it uses the floor vents already existing in the home with new ductwork. He said we have to do new ductwork, which is good. I knew that the original ductwork was junk. And then he also quoted us on mini splits. So tell them, what is the cost for the conventional unit? What were we quoted? Well, let me say that we were hoping for a high end of about 7000 yeah, I would say I was thinking it would start around seven. Okay. Be somewhere around seven grand, considering the size of our home and, and what we needed or whatever. It ended up being $14,000. <laughs> yep. For the conventional unit. Now, mini splits are supposed to be so much more economical and well known to be they? much more economical. And I'll give you the honors. I don't remember. Oh, the mini splits are going to be $10,000. Okie dokie. Well, that answers that. <laughs> we are not going to go that route. Uh, I will say this. The HVAC company we went with to get a quote on is the best one in our area. Yeah, there's probably cheaper guys out there, but I am not going to spend the amount of money it would cost on, I don't know, Joe's HVAC company. I would only go with a reputable company in this, so I'm not going to quote or shop. We're not going to get another quotes. We're not going to get another HVAC company to come out and do that because we would only use this one company. But we're not gonna be using that company, so we don't get to do HVAC stuff. That's okay, because what we have works, it keeps us hot, and it keeps us cool, and whatever we need. We'll see. I might still look into some more DIY units. There are a lot of mini split systems out there advertised as DIY solutions, so maybe we can check into those. I know Mr. Cool is a well-known company as far as mini splits in the DIY world, so maybe I'll look into those. But otherwise, no central heat and air for us right now, which is what we've been doing the past five years. So, Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video on catching up on what felt like a thousand little projects that were not really noteworthy otherwise, and hearing the story of how we spent some time getting an HVAC quote, had some ludicrous laughter, <laughs> and are going to stay with what we've been with for the foreseeable future. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and otherwise we'll see you guys next time in the construction zone. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Bye. Bye.